click the button. Good morning. Friday morning. Glad to be with you here this morning for our daily devotions together. Yeah, chiropractor and PT appointments this morning, so I'm dressed a little more casually. Oh, you know what's happening here is the exposure levels are jumping up and down. And you probably don't care, but I care. Um, and I want to uh, take a quick look here at that. Um, oh, there. Apply. Okay. There. Okay. All right. Yeah. So good morning. I was looking at my little bottle of eyeglass cleaner here, trying to figure out what's in it. Because I've got, I've got another one over here, and it and it and it foams. And this stuff didn't foam. This is Zeiss lens cleaner from that large department store that everybody knows about. This is Vision Source Signature Eye Care. Um, and it foams. Oh, I lost the top. Oh well. And this stuff doesn't. And that just says uh, that this one just says it contains alcohol. Uh, where I saw the ingredients here. Spray on, wipe off. And I said I can't. I thought I saw ingredients. Caution contains alcohol. Yeah, it just says caution contains alcohol. Where this one says it contains deionized water, which makes sense. You don't want to use regular water in here. You use you use non-ionic water so it doesn't separate. Uh, two butyl oxyl ethanol, oxyethanol, which it's, it's obviously an alcohol. I don't know exactly where you get that from. And proprietary detergents and preservatives. So that stuff foams, this stuff doesn't. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Anyway, good morning. There's your lesson on lens cleaners today. If you wear glasses, you know that they are important. And I, I try to use every morning I clean it with that. Or if it's really bad, I clean it with that. Um, and then we've got the lens wipes uh, that you tear open and take out, like the old wet naps and clean the lenses with, which are the same as the Zeiss lens cleaners. Zeiss or Zeiss? I'd have to talk to a German, I guess. Anyway, good morning, April, what is it, April 8th, Friday, April 8th, uh, the next day of the week. Um, yeah, Friday already. Wow, the week went fast. Um, and we're continuing uh, as we go through Exodus today and um, in the, the, hit, the misadventures of Moses um, as he brings the people of, of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Well as he's God's tool to do that, right? I mean, it's God, God's right arm that's going to bring them out. Um, but it, it's Moses who is his prophet uh, who carries out that work at the time. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Kathy, good morning. Loretta and Dale, good morning to you. Uh, down there in Texas, getting ready for the, for the kids to show up, I'm sure. A um, couple days yet. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Neil and Geraldine, hello. There's Bonnie. She's, she said, I'm tired of talking about snow. I'm putting up the, the verse that I have for this week, which is 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Renee, good morning to you. Glad you're here with us. Glenn, good morning. See, he said snowy just for you there, Bonnie. Leela, good morning. Glad to see you here, dear. I haven't had a Michigan weather report here yet. Michael, 73 in the in Florida. Headed for 78. Gulf water at 78. Okay. Uh, morning from the princess and myself. Well, you know, I, I, Karen's worth that, right? I mean, she married you. She's worth everything. <laughs> we all marry up, Michael. We all marry up. And then, uh, and Verna, good morning. Glad you're here. Debbie and Grant and Anne, good morning to you guys. There's Brenda. 42 in Kalamazoo. Hey, that rhymes. 42 in Kalamazoo. I wish it was 42 here. Snowed again last night. And it froze overnight. As Bonnie said, it's 20. Oh, there she put the weather up. 20, 26 and more snow. Um, Ashley. Oh, Lord, give Ashley strength each each and every day. Mushtaq, good evening, my friend. And uh, 
let's go ahead here. Yeah, that's that's everybody who's piped in. Hello to everybody else who might be watching now, later, or tomorrow, or whatever. I am uh, recording now, and then um, what I've recorded here uh, at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning, Central Time, um, goes up on YouTube on my on my personal YouTube channel Rev 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 Dave Sutton uh, David Sutton that's uh, so if you know of anybody who doesn't have Facebook but would like to get these um, uh, you you uh, you can go there you can direct them there um, or you can even you know share it from here or you can share it from from YouTube if you want to. It's okay to share this stuff, right? It's an open group. Um, if I say something that you think that somebody else should hear, don't be afraid to, to like, share, and, and so, so forth. So let's, um, let's go ahead and uh, begin page 295 in the Lutheran Service Book, the order of daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order. That's where we begin here each day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If I turn too far. Our reading today, for, oh, not our reading, our psalm. Our psalm today, Psalm 18, verses 6 and 7 and 16 through 20. Understand as we're going through this, we're reading the Old Testament stuff, but it, it also, if, if we'd stay with the New Testament stuff for a third year, um, we'd be at the uh, night in which Jesus was betrayed. So some of the some of the psalms and the hymns and things like that are going with um, the end of Holy Week. So our psalm today, Psalm 18, 6 through 7, 16 to 20. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundation also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me. And they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the clean, clean, cleanness of my hands, he rewarded me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In my distress, I called upon the Lord to God. My God, I cried for help. Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. From the, from the top of the cross, Christ cries, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? From his temple he heard my voice. My cry reached his ears, and then the earth reeled and rocked. The mountains quaked because he was angry. It's the crucifixion. It's the crucifixion. Jesus calls on the Father for help. The Father sees him die, lets him die, because he has to die for us. And having died, the Father is now angry. And there's a great earthquake. We hear that in the readings. There's a great earthquake. The curtain in the temple is torn in two. Tombs are opened, and many come out from them. Uh, he drew me out of many waters from death. He took me, rescued me from my strong enemy, from the enemy of death. Death has been defeated. He brought me out into a broad place and rescued me because he delighted in me. The Father loves the Son. 
when you become part of the Son by baptism, you become in Christ. So he loves you as well. Not because you are good, because you were created sinful, but because you are in his Son, in his Son he loves. Let's go ahead and continue here. Our reading from Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 18. Exodus chapter 4. Then Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, What is in your hand? He said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Put out your hand and catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Again the Lord said to him, Put your hand inside your cloak. And he put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Then God said, Put your hand back inside your cloak. And he put his hand back inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. If they will not believe you, God said, or listen to the first sign, they may believe the latter sign. If they will not believe even these two signs, or listen to your voice, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and the water that you shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, O oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be your mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people, and he shall be your mouth, and you shall be as God to him. And take in your hand this staff with which you shall do the signs. Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go back to my brothers in Egypt to see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ashley, we certainly will. I have no problem with that. Consider yourself back on it as of today. Um, God gives Moses two signs. In a day or so, we'll see how those signs work out for him, knowing already that... Uh, Pharaoh's heart will be hardened against Moses' request because, because the Lord wants to make it clear to all of Egypt and therefore all the world that he is God and that he will not be denied. So he gives him the sign. You drop the, drop the staff. It becomes a snake. Grab it by the tail. Pick it up. <clears throat> not sure I'd want that sign. Not so good with the snakes. Um, I have a friend who's a snake handler. In fact, he was in the news a while ago because he helped a lady who had a snake in her car. And uh, he does a lot with, what do you call that, her, 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 herpetaria, something like that. Um, good guy. Great guy. Um, 
but he does he uh he, he has many snakes of his own and he he has arrangements to get lost snakes and things like that to places where they're safe no fear of the snakes whatsoever none whatsoever not this guy mm -mm. um and, and the hand right put it into your cloak and when you pull it out it was leprous like snow put it back in take it out and it's your flesh is renewed um, these are signs right we call them miracles but the, the greek word is samaron which means sign right was a sign to a sign points to something it points in this case to the power of god to do these things so go and show them these signs and tell them what i've told you and pharaoh what i've told you and if he still won't listen then pour water on the from the nile on the ground it'll turn to blood right well that's going to be bigger than just the water he pours on the ground but we'll come to that in the first plague um but Moses says, Lord, I can't, I, I'm not so good with the words. It doesn't speak so well. So, uh, the, the, one of the, one of the common thoughts, and keep in mind that Charlton Heston and Moses have nothing in common other than he portrayed Moses in the role in the, in the Ten Commandments. Moses would have been a Mediterranean or, or a, a Middle Eastern man, brown skin color, probably shorter in stature, probably rugged um, in the face from all the days in the sun uh, as a shepherd, um, wizened, if you will. Um, and what it was, we don't know. Speculation is that he had some speech impediment, whether it was a, a cleft palate, uh, although his mother saw him and he was beautiful, so although a child, cleft palate or not, is beautiful, um, or he had a stutter uh, or some other speech impediment, and so he didn't feel he could talk in front of people. So he said, I'm slow of speech and of tongue. It doesn't talk so goods. And the Lord says, who made man? Who gave him a mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf? The Lord does. Hmm? Much later, much, much later, in the Gospel of Matthew, I think also in Luke, Jesus tells the, the disciples, not just the apostles, but the disciples, that when they come under persecution and are dragged before magistrates and judges and kings and in the synagogues, and they don't know what to say, don't be anxious about it, because in that day and at that time, the Holy Spirit will give them what it is they are to say, the words to speak. And that's quite often what happens with faithful preachers. I didn't sing very well. I still don't sing all that great. Um, but with practice... And the fact that when I'm leading the liturgy and song or singing hymns, I know I'm doing it to God's glory. I sing, but it's to him and for him. Yeah, it's amazing. Bonnie said to me the other day, and, and Zan backed her up on it, that, um, you know, you sing hymns and the liturgy wonderfully on key most of the time. Not all the time, most of the time. But man... We get out of there and you go to sing some song on the radio or something like that, and you can't carry a tune in a bucket. And they're right. One of my best friends, Kenny Brown, said to me once, you're an equal opportunity guy. You'll slaughter any song. So Moses says, I can't do this. And God says, I'll do it for you. Quit your whining. And he says, no, please let somebody else do this. It's a burden. The prophets carry a burden. In fact, a lot of times the language of the message that the prophet's receiving, the, the words used for it, we call it prophecy um, when they say, thus saith the Lord. But the Greek calls it a burden. The Greek word is a burden. And it is. It's a burden. Because whenever you speak the Lord's word, the world outside of Christ will hate you for it, despise you for it. He says, don't you have a brother, Aaron? He'll speak. I'll tell you what to say. You tell Aaron, and Aaron will say it for you. I will be God to you. You will be God to Aaron. 
and that and this is the end of the discussion Moses you're going to do this thing and your brother will be glad to see you and he will be glad to carry out this task now pick up that staff and go right take in your hand this staff with which you will do the signs and get out of here Moses is brave. He talks back to God. It's almost like Abraham praying for a lot in the people in the city of Sodom when Sodom's going to be destroyed. But that's one of the things that makes Moses different than all the other prophets, is that he stands face to face with God and he, and he has conversations with him. He communicates with him. We can speak with God, but not in the same way that Moses does. He's panim panim, a face to face, responding and talking. So Moses goes back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and says, allow me the time to go to Egypt and check on my brothers, see if they're still alive. And Jethro says, go, go, go in peace. <laughs> go in peace, serve the Lord. What do we take from this? The Lord uses us. He uses every one of us. There are times and places where the Lord puts us where we need to be in order to speak his word faithfully or to let our lives be a witness to who we are in Christ Jesus, that, that we are something different than is in the world. I think in the coming days, weeks, months, years, this is growing in importance rather than shrinking. There's so much false stuff out there. Contrary to God's word. Some of it, there are false teachers out there saying it's an agreement with God's word. This was a little bit of my of the sermon last night that I preached, but but for, for midweek service. But there comes a time when you have to say, No, I stand for something different. And even though you want to be like Moses and say, God, don't make me do this. Don't don't make me suffer for this. I know that if I say these things, there will be consequences for me personally. But Jesus tells us, do not fear the ones who can kill the body, but fear the ones, one who can destroy the soul. Do not fear those who can destroy the body, but fear the one who can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. So there comes a time where we have to simply speak the truth. Sometimes it's just acquaintances, people we meet on the street or people we know. Sometimes it's our loved ones. Sometimes you have to stand on the truth. You don't have to go out and rub their faces in it. You don't have to go out looking for trouble. But when God places the opportunity in front of you, the truth is what you must speak. And the truth is his word. And if you speak his word, then it's the Holy Spirit that speaks for you and gives you the boldness and the strength to do what must be done. God give you strength in all your doings in this world. Amen. Hey, Mary. Ah, don't worry. Late, nothing, nothing to do with being late. John and Janet, good morning to you. Don't worry about being late, guys. You're here. You can always rewind and start over. Or as I said before, now you can go to YouTube at 11 o'clock and it'll come up as a as our premiere on, on, uh, my, on my YouTube page. Let's go to our prayer of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, you released many from their bondage to sin, death, and the devil as the healer of the nations. But when it came time to release you, the crowd chose a murderer instead. Through our crucifixion with you in the waters of our baptism, may we continually be released from our sins as we confess you to be our everlasting King. For you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this thir Thursday, it's not Thursday evening, it's Friday morning, on this Friday morning. O oh Lord, faithful God, you gave your holy law not to ensnare or torment us, but to show us pure righteousness. Yet the sinful nature inherited from Adam seizes the opportunity in me to act on temptation and disobey. You promise in your word that you will not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability and that you graciously provide a way out. In his earthly ministry, your son, our dear Lord Jesus, resisted the devil over 40 long days and nights of fasting and struggle by triumphing in perfect righteousness and humbly suffering and dying on the cross. He has won for me and for all believers the forgiveness of our many and grievous sins. He grants me new life through the water and word of holy baptism. And in his gospel, I find the power of God to my salvation. As this new day begins, increase my love for your word, for it is a light to my path in the way of temptation's many snares, the way out of temptation's many snares. Through your means of grace, increase my strength to stand firm in the confession of Christ, for your holy word and sacraments alone can remove me from the darkness of the devil and the world and set me firm upon the rock that is Christ my Lord. Put to death all the sinful passions that remain in my flesh so that I may desire only those things which are pleasing to you. In Jesus Christ, my Lord's name, I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are suffering in body, mind, or soul, those whose illnesses are coming upon them. Lord, give to the physicians and to the nurses and to the caregivers wisdom and compassion as they care for those who are ill. Give to those suffering at home confidence and comfort in your holy name and in your promise. And for those to whom death draws near, remind them that this is but for a time. And the time with you, by faith in you, will be for eternity. Be with those this day who have asked for our prayers, especially Ashley, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, and all who call upon your most holy name. This we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died and was raised again, ascended to heaven, and now lives with you, now lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our Friday morning devotions to a close. Glad that you were here with me on this day to share with me in this little bit of the word. Whether you were here right away or a little bit later, I'm glad you're here. God's peace be with you, and we will see you here oh, Saturday tomorrow and then Holy Week. Uh, that's, the, that's one of the hardest times for, uh, for any pastor. Busy, busy, busy week.
God's blessings be with you, and we will see you here tomorrow morning uh, for our, our daily devotions together. God's peace.